All right, then let's solve an example uh, of the concept we learned in the last video, bundled conductors. So we derived a equation for the inductance of bundled conductors. We saw a two bundle conductor, a three bundle conductor and four bundle conductor and how they affect this ds value down here in the denominator. Uh, so this is the formula we uh, we saw last time what we're going to do is use this today and this will give you an idea of how bundle conductors reduce the inductance because what i'll do is i'll solve an example for a two bundle conductor and then we we'll look uh, at that same scenario um, considering uh, just one solid conductor uh, not bundled conductors before we get into that though, so I, I won't go to, through the recap, I've just mentioned the equation here. We saw this in the last uh, uh, last video and we'll be using this in the formula uh, in our example today. But before I go any further though, um, one thing I mentioned last time, I kind of just uh, drew a, a poll like this and, and said, oh, you have uh, uh, bundled conductors. Uh, let me just use the colors. So we just said, okay, so these are, just imagine this uh being your bundle conductors this is your spacer in between and you have your three phases but generally if you see this is actually uh, not how um, you have your high voltage lines this is uh, uh, more of a distribution voltage uh, tower um, configuration if you've noticed um, when you go outside uh, and you've ever noticed um, high voltage line towers they're more around this configuration. I just wanted to mention that, uh, not uh, leave you with any uh, um, any misconceptions or any, any wrong information. So this is just kind of what you would see outside. And I'll encourage you to go and, and, and notice these, uh, these uh, high voltage towers outside. Um, um, and th these would be probably closer to a, to a residential area. You'd notice something like this. These would have their own specific corridor and, and you'd have uh, your face conductors. So that this is where a bundle conductor comes into play. So this is, let's say, phase A, phase B, and just imagine this in 3D. So these are conductors going to the next tower down there. Um, and those are your spacers. So that's something what it looks like. So this is phase A here, phase B conductors, phase C conductors, and then you have your uh, sky wire on 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 top of the uh, on top of the tower. So th that's more or less the configuration that you have, um, and that's kind of something what we'd look at in the example today. Um, so in the example, let's imagine we have our phase A conductors. These are our phase B conductors. And these are our phase C conductors. Let me draw the spacers. So that's your spacers. Let me draw the conductors a little bit bigger so you can at least see them. So that's phase A, B, and C. Let's give what the distances are. So let's say the distance between these two and these two here is uh, 10 meters, 10 meters. This small distance is D, D, and D. Let's say D is given as 50 centimeters, and the radius of each conductor is given to you as 0 0.02 meters. So I've brought these conductors. This is how they look. Um, uh, this is the configuration they have. What we are supposed to do is, so um, your problem find the inductive reactance in ohms per kilometer per phase. So if you're supposed to find the inductive reactance in ohms per kilometers, this is a practical value that we'd find uh, this is the kind of value that a software would use uh, to get your uh, power flow um, uh, solution so let's go and go ahead and solve this uh, problem now uh, so, so to find the inductive reactance we'll first have to find out the inductance and there's a critical piece of information i haven't given there here uh, in the problem but i'm, I'm going to 
give that to you and we need it so let's go ahead and uh, find the inductance first to find the inductance it's simply plug in the uh, plug in the values that we have in this equation so let's first find out d equivalent that is d1 to 2 so this is this in essence is 1 this is 2 and this is 3 right so d1 to 2 is 10 meters d2 to 3 is again 10 meters d3 to uh, sorry this should be here 3 to 1 3 to 1 is 20 meters and cube root of that so that if we plug that into our calculator should give us something like 12.6 meters what is your ds this is a two bundle uh, situation so we're going to use this formula right here so ds to b which is this right here is going to be ds ds we know is 0.7788 times r so let's do that 0.7788 times r is 0 0.02 meters 0 0.02 meters and um so that's ds what is d d is 50 centimeters so that's 0.5 meters and that just square root of that should give us 0 0.09 meters now our l becomes 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 ln of 12.6 over 0 0.09 which should give us something like 0.99 microhenries per meter now that you have this so you have your l this is henry or microhenries per meter um and this is your average per phase right so this is your average inductance per phase we, we are asked to find the inductive reactance so what is inductive reactance inductive reactance is xl what is this is omega l which is 2 pi f l now you see the information you're missing you're missing the frequency so depending on which part of the world you are its frequency is either going to be 50 hertz or 60 hertz so where i am at it's 60 hertz in north america so we're going to assume 60 hertz here um, so let's plug that in so you have 2 pi times 60 times 0.99 times 10 to the power minus 6 and this is meters they've asked us to find in per kilometers so you're going to multiply that by 10 to the power 3 and when you plug this in and calculate it you should get a value of 0.373 so our inductive reactance for this line xl is equal to 0 0.373 ohms per kilometer per phase and this is an important value xl is what we practically use um, just like resistance this is the inductive reactance for that line um, let us now as i said what we'll do is we'll do a so we solve this using the two uh, bundle situation let's just imagine it wasn't a two bundle case it was just single conductors let's just say it was single conductor same distances apart so this is 10 meters this is 10 meters um, there's this d goes away because there's no uh, distance between the bundles and r was still 0 0.02 meters what would have what would the l and the xl values be in that case let's have a look at that um, so let me just change the colors so then what you would have is um, l would simply become 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 ln of d equivalent over ds which means 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 ln of uh, 12.6 the d equivalent doesn't change this just becomes 0 0.7788 times 0 0.02 and you would get your l value as 1.33 microhenries per meter 
so you see this is 1.33 this is 0.99 the difference how much lower this is right and this would obviously have a direct impact on your xl value because your xl now becomes 2 pi f l and you plug in this for l and your value comes out to be 0 0.501 ohms per kilometer per phase so again you see how we've reduced the xl the inductive reactance and the inductance itself by using a bundle situation right by using bundle conductors and that is as i mentioned in the last video the big big um, advantage of using bundle conductors apart from the fact that they reduce the corona effect for um, extra high voltage lines like 200, uh, 230 kV, 400 kV, 500 kV. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you with a sample problem. So in our sample problem, let us assume a four bundle conduct, uh, conductor for each of the three phases. Let's draw these spacers out. So those are your spacers there. And I'll give you the distances. So the distance, let's say, between this and this is 12 meters. Between this and this is also 12 meters. Um, let's say the distance D, this is all D here, right? All of these distances are D. And I'm going to give you the value of D as being equal to, let's say, 60 centimeters. And your R is 0 0.01 meters. And once again, you have to find out the XL value in ohms per kilometer per phase. And then F is given as 60 hertz. So it should be relatively straightforward. The only thing I've changed from the example that I solved is that it's moved from a two bundle conductor to a four bundle conductor. So you'll use this formula right here. Um, also, what I'll encourage you to do is again, solve it, uh, imagining that it's not a bundle configuration. Those are just single conductors. See what the difference is. The difference should be even greater than what we found here. Um, because this is a four bundle conductor um, for each of the three phases. And uh, let me know what uh, answers you get. Uh, if you have any problems, uh, send me an email, lemish at movingelectrons.com or leave your comments below. You can fee feel free to leave the answers that you get down below uh, and I'll, I'll uh, check them for you and, and, and uh, let you know if, if you're on the right path. If you haven't already, please do subscribe uh, to the channel. Uh, I'll be posting videos uh, on uh, capacitance now. Uh, that we've wrapped up uh, inductance uh, before obviously moving to uh, more topics such as power flow and and uh, and short circuit and whatnot so do subscribe to our channel and uh, hope to catch you in the next video uh, very soon take care bye now